train. And yeah. Maybe actually select the camera, move it along the X axis, and hit I keyframe for location, then go to frame 100. Uh, nope. Accidentally just hit hid the camera. I'll move it along the X axis again. Uh, that's too much. And hit I keyframe location. So now we're playing and the camera's following along with the missile. Great. While we're at it, we might as well just give the missile a great material. Just something real quick. It's got the specularity to point one. Maybe add a texture, set it to clouds, uh, set the size down, and check color, and check normal. You can barely see it in here, so set the normal effect to 0 0.05. I'm sorry about the cat mewing in the background, if you can hear that. Hopefully you can't. Um, why don't we give a surrender? So that missile was okay, but all in all, it looks terrible because this is still kind of made of Play-Doh, which we need to fix. And while we're at it. As a whole, it's a little too thin, so hit S, Shift X, and fatten it up. Maybe fatten it up isn't the best term for it, but set it to full power. Add a new material, and set this to volumetric, and we're going to set the density to zero, actually. And the reflection color is going to be gray. If we can see this, it's going to be darker now. Kind of like smoke. And set the step size to 0 0.02. That'll make it more high quality. Now, what we want to do is we want to add a new texture. And this texture. The type is going to be blend. Great. Um, so under colors, check ramp. And take this hook point and slide it over. Now, under influence, uncheck emission color and check density. And what that's, well, let's set up to 0.8. What that's going to do is this blend is going to mark where it's going to be, um, dense, where it's going to be visible in uh, the render. And, um, sorry about my computer howling like that, but it's not very tough in terms of things it can withstand. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set the emission in this material to 3. I'm not going to think that's crazy. But set the color to black. You may think that's just as crazy. Um, but what we're going to do now is add another texture. This is also going to be blend. And your colors check ramp. I'm going to take this and we're gonna leave it almost white, make it a little bluish. Use control click to add another hook point in here, set the alpha to one, make it more blue. Add another hook point right here, set it to full alpha and full brightness. And its color is gonna be yellow. 
And add another hook point over here. And it is going to be a reddish orange sort of color. And under just stalled there. Sorry for that. And then take this hook point and its color is going to be bright red. And the alpha for this orange hook point is going to be 0.8. And it will be emission color, but it will also be emission. And we're going to set this value to minus 3. And now something we need to do. Well, let's just give this a render and see what it looks like. Hey, that's actually working better than I thought. It didn't work so well last time. Okay, we don't... I'm not sure we really need to do that next step, then. Um, but, anyway... Uh, hmm. This... These hook points are going up too far. And this white hook point actually needs to be more blue. So we need to squeeze these in quite a bunch. So they should only cover like half of the volumetric part, which is all limited by this texture. So we need to maybe slide that over a little more. Now, if we give it a render, Okay, so you're seeing some smoke. But, we still have the problem that this looks totally horrible. <sighs> and, well, that's normal. Because, it has absolutely no texturing whatsoever. So, add a subsurf modifier. Set the render subdivisions to 1. And then add a displacement modifier. And if you haven't used the displacement modifier, it needs a texture to make bumps. So we need to give it a texture. So add a new texture. Under clouds, the size is going to be 0.2. And on the top, uncheck that little checkbox. So, it's not affecting the material at all. What it will do, is it'll act as our displacement. And you can see we're getting displacement. And that is way too extreme. So set this strength, rather than 1, set it to point 0.2. That's still a little high, so set it to point 0.15. And now, this is a nice trick, hit cursor to selected, that'll just snap the cursor to that origin point, add an empty, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to take this direction, I mean texture coordinates, rather than map, we're going to set it to object. And we're going to select the empty for that object. Um, so now, if we move this empty, that displacement texture moves right along with it, which is awesome. I love that feature. Now that's in Blender. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. Um... However, we don't want much displacement at all right here coming out of the nozzle, so add a vertex group and go into edit mode and with everything selected, hit assign. Now if we hit control tab, we go into weight paint mode and we see this is 
I'll put in full weight into um, this vertex group. But we don't want that. So set the weight to zero. And go into wireframe view mode. Set the strength to one. And use F to scale this up. And color in this area coming out of the nozzle blue. Tap out of, out of mode. Then go into the modifier stack. And for the vertex group, select that group. And that means it's only assigning to what's red. But it didn't get to the other side. So we need to color in that side too. Um, set the weight to 0.3 actually, rather than zero. Make this slightly kind of like a pale greenish color. So it'll have slight displacement, but that displacement will be very weak. So let's give this a render now. Okay. It's looking a little bit better. Actually, it's looking a whole lot better. But, um, well, it's, um, as a whole, it's not really looking good. <laughs> um, so what we need to do is we, this is just assigning this blend texture so that it's coping with the displacement so that this blend is looking perfectly flat and that's exactly what we don't want um so a, a way we can fix that is we can select this missile snap the cursor to that using shift s and add another empty and rotate it and shift select the missile and hit control P so parent to object. And then in this uh, jet trail, go to its textures. And we, under mapping, we want the coordinates rather than being generated. Hold on, Blender just stalled. Set it to object and select that second empty and do the same with this color texture set it to object set empty dot zero zero one and now we can take this empty and go to local orientation and Actually, we need to rotate this a little. We need to scale it out along its local x axis. Now if we select this, we can see in the material that these textures have been stretched. So if we render this now, it's a little messed up. Because, well, actually... Not quite sure why that is. Maybe if we go into this texture panel, select this second texture and flip it around on its ramp. It shouldn't be the problem, but 